We are following the story of Matilda this afternoon. The four-month-old hound dog was brought to the Paris, Kentucky Animal Welfare Society in January after being neglected by her owners. Now she's found a forever home and her previous owners have been charged with neglect. Here's Jim Stratman with the latest on her recovery. Love, it's something we all crave, all of us, including Matilda. It, it, was, it was heartbreaking. Matilda came to the Paris Animal Welfare Society as a four month old that weighed nine pounds after suffering months of neglect. She had like pressure sores all over her. She was terrified of any human interaction um, and obviously just completely and utterly emaciated. Like how somebody can do that to an animal, just it's beyond belief. Delaney Green had only been working at Paws for a couple of months when Matilda came in. She was definitely fearful of human, just basic human interaction, but she's also very defensive of what she thought was hers. So like her food bowl, her toys, stuff like that. There was there was no just walking up and being like, here, I'm gonna take your bowl and we're gonna, we're gonna refill it. No, you're not taking my bowl. And that was a process. Green says that it's one thing to nurse an animal back to physical health, but just like humans, you need to care for their mental well-being too. Once she learned what love was, she was definitely just obsessed with it, just completely and utterly. She wanted to be, you know, up in your lap all day. There were many days that I sat at the computer putting paperwork in and she was just curled up right in my lap. Matilda's owners were convicted of second degree animal neglect, which Green says is some form of justice. Matilda's previous owners will have to pay a fine, face some probation time, and most impactfully, they'll never be allowed to own an animal in Kentucky again. And as for Matilda, she's learned to love again and found a forever home where she can do just that. Reporting in Paris, Jim Stratman, WKYT. Well, Knott County officials are gearing up for the 2022 Spring Trail Ride, one of the county's biggest events. Community leaders are hopeful this year will be a record turnout. Previous trail rides, while successful, have still had lower attendance rates due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says anticipation is high. Thousands of people from all over the United States and uh, here local folks there getting pumped about it. Already got several in line out here waiting to get in. So, uh, man, I can't wait. It's going to be another, another successful event, no doubt. Registration begins May 1st. Admission is $25 at the gate. We are just a few weeks away now from the 5th Annual Gray Matters 5K and 10K in Letcher County. The event is honoring a former secretary at Emelina Elementary School, Sherry Mullins, who died last year from an astrocytoma brain tumor. That's the same type. Co-founder and WIMT Morning Forecaster Brandon Robinson was originally diagnosed with in 2016. It's a way to bring awareness to uh, this situation, this cause, and I think it's a great way just to bond with people that have been survivors or family members of survivors there that you may not get to see other times of the year. The proceeds from this year's Gray Matters will be split between ICANN Services Incorporated in Letcher County and the Hazard ARH Cancer Center where Sherry received her treatments. If you want to participate, today is the last day you can register and still get a race day t-shirt, but you can also sign up in person at 7 a.m. on the day of the race. You can find a link to register and more information on WIMT.com. We'd love to see you out in Whitesburg for that as well. I'll certainly be there. Hopefully the weather by then will still be rather nice. As I recall, it was a little warm last year, but not too bad. We know all about warm temperatures that we've seen the past couple of days, but that is quickly coming to an end. I-75 in Mount Vernon, you see the clouds, those low-hanging dark clouds. Plenty of shower activity starting to kick up out there. I-64 at Moorhead, still a little bit of sunshine, but those dark clouds not far away. Temperatures... They're warm in parts of the area. It's 81 in Hazard, 82 Pikeville, 83 Jackson. And the big winners right now, 85 in Prestonsburg. Warm out there, but look out to the west. Temperatures falling through the 70s. That's where we're watching showers developing really along I-75 between Mount Vernon and London right about now. Back to the west across portions of Pulaski, Wayne, and McCreary counties right now. And off to the north, a few thunderstorms. Those will look to bypass our area, but... We're going to be keeping an eye on the potential for some heavier rain, maybe some gusty winds 
later on tonight. You see cold fronts still back out to our west. So for tonight, scattered storms, especially early. We'll turn those winds around to the northwest late. We'll be down into the low 50s for overnight lows tonight. I'll have the very latest, though, on when cooler temperatures and just how cool they'll be for daytime highs coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Evan, thank you. Both President Joe Biden and the leader of Ukraine described Monday's meeting in Kyiv with Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin as good. The two top Biden administration officials traveled covertly by train into Ukraine's capital. They are the highest ranking U.S. officials to make that trip there since the Russian invasion began, and they say more U.S. diplomats will be there in the coming weeks. CBS's Deborah Alfaron has more from the White House. President Biden has announced his intention to nominate career diplomat Bridget Brink to be the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. She currently serves as the U.S. ambassador to Slovakia. The official White House announcement came after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin met for about three hours with President Volodymyr Zelensky and his staff in Kyiv. When it comes to Russia's war aims, Russia is failing. Ukraine is succeeding. During the visit, the two leaders said the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv will reopen in the coming weeks, and American diplomats will start making day trips into the country next week, starting in the western city of Lviv. We're doing it carefully. We're doing it with the security of our personnel foremost in mind. The U.S. secretaries also announced $700 million in military financing for Ukraine and nearby allies, amid Moscow's warnings against sending more arms into Ukraine. We want to see Russia. Uh, uh, weakened uh, to the degree that it can't uh, do the kinds of things that uh, it has done uh, in, in invading Ukraine. Monday, Russian forces launched strikes against Ukrainian railways, which are vital to moving supplies and evacuating civilians. Meanwhile, Russia says it is investigating large fires at two of its oil depots near the town of Bryansk, which is not far from Ukraine's border. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. After the meeting in Kyiv, Secretary of State Blinken traveled back to the U.S. while Defense Secretary Austin stayed in Germany for meetings with allies. The U.N. Secretary General will travel to Moscow this week to try to convince Russian President Vladimir Putin to end the war. Afterward, he will also go to Kyiv. French President Emmanuel Macron just became the first president of the country to win re-election in more than 20 years. Boasting a substantial victory over Marine Le Pen, leader of France's far-right nationalist movement, earning 59 percent of the vote compared to Le Pen's 41 percent. Although that may seem like a wide margin, it's the closest a candidate in her party has ever come to a win. President Macron admits many people didn't vote for him, but rather against his opponent and promised to address the country's economic issues. The world's oldest person has died at 119. Kane Tanaka was born on January 2nd, 1903, and died April 19th. In a tweet earlier this month, her family said she'd been sick and in and out of the hospital. Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare said the Japanese woman was certified by the Guinness World Records as the world's oldest person. Tanaka was supposed to take part in the Olympic torch relay at the postponed 2020 Summer Olympics, but she did not participate because of COVID-19 concerns. Coming up on First at Four, dozens of businesses are part of a pilot program testing the possible benefits of a four-day work week. And still watching a few storms on Pinpoint Doppler. I'll tell you when they move into places like Pikeville. Coming up in just a bit.